The most difficult and complex part about launching a rocket is getting it off the ground, and that's exactly what the engines are tasked to do. Booster development, therefore, becomes the most challenging and intricate part of the entire process because of the critical job it has to perform. In the most recent Starship launch, the engines outperformed all previous Starship launches, showing incredible progress. But Musk just revealed something we haven't seen before, and we're going to dive into that and other important details in this video. Before we go any further, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's future groundbreaking achievements. The first stage of the mission, the liftoff, involved all 33 Raptor engines firing simultaneously. These engines are designed to generate an immense amount of thrust, with the total output reaching over 7,000 tons of force. To put that into perspective, the Saturn V rocket, which held the record for the highest thrust for decades, produced around 7.6 million pounds of thrust during launch. In comparison, the Raptor engines on Starship's Super Heavy Booster now set a new standard, producing thrust levels never before achieved by any other rocket. When all 33 engines ignited, they generated the necessary force to lift the 5,000-ton Starship vehicle off the ground and propel it into space. This initial phase is the most critical, because the engines must overcome Earth's gravity and get the rocket moving. At full throttle, the engines work together to push the vehicle into the atmosphere at an incredible speed. Despite the immense weight of the rocket, the coordinated power of the 33 engines allowed it to lift off smoothly and efficiently. Unlike traditional rocket engines, the Raptors are designed to maintain performance over multiple flights thanks to their reusability and advanced engineering. The engines are optimized for both thrust and efficiency, which allows them to create the necessary force while minimizing fuel consumption. As the Super Heavy Booster 12 continued its ascent, the engines entered the next phase of the flight, where they maintained thrust to push the rocket higher into the atmosphere. In this phase, the engines generated over 7,000 tons of thrust consistently. The 33 Raptor engines are designed to operate under extreme pressure and temperature conditions, which is necessary to maintain the speed and trajectory needed to reach orbit. One notable aspect of the Raptor engines is their use of methane and liquid oxygen as propellants. This combination not only allows for higher efficiency, but also enables rapid reusability. As the booster climbs, the engines optimize fuel usage to ensure that the rocket reaches the desired altitude without wasting any propellant. The engines must balance the thrust required to push the rocket into space while keeping the structure intact under the immense forces of acceleration and pressure. During the ascent, the engines faced extreme environmental challenges, especially as they pushed through the dense lower atmosphere. The rapid speed increase creates intense aerodynamic forces, and the engines had to maintain their performance despite these conditions. The combustion process within the Raptor engines generates temperatures up to 3,000 Celsius, particularly around the nozzle area, which would be enough to melt most conventional materials. However, the Raptor engines are equipped with advanced cooling and heat shielding systems that allow them to endure such extreme conditions without compromising performance. Musk recently posted an image of the engine bay post-flight, showing the wear and tear on the engines after the mission. The photo highlighted the red and orange hues on the nozzles, a visual representation of the immense heat the engines had endured during flight. Despite these high temperatures, the engines remained fully functional throughout the flight, a testament to their robust design and durability. The ability to handle such intense conditions without significant degradation is one of the key advantages of the Raptor engines, especially when compared to traditional rocket engines that are designed for single use. As the Super Heavy Booster 12 reached its maximum altitude, the engines began to transition into the next phase of the flight the boost back burn. During this stage, the engines work to slow the booster's velocity and adjust its trajectory, guiding it back toward the landing site. This process requires precise control over the thrust output, as the booster needs to decelerate without losing stability. The Raptor engines on SpaceX's Super Heavy Booster are designed with vectoring capabilities, which means they can adjust the direction of their thrust to control the orientation of the booster. 
This is crucial for managing the vehicle's trajectory throughout the flight, particularly during the descent phase. Instead of falling freely back to Earth, the engines can throttle up or down as needed, providing the control necessary for a safe and precise landing. During the descent, especially in the moments just before the catching attempt, there were visible flames coming out from the booster. This occurred around T plus 6 minutes and 30 seconds into the flight. The fire and glowing appearance at the bottom of the booster are caused by the intense heat generated from the engine thrust and the high-speed interaction of the vehicle with the atmosphere. While it may seem alarming to see flames shooting out, this is actually a normal part of the re-entry process, especially for a rocket of this size and power. The flames are primarily a result of the engine's burning fuel to generate the thrust needed to slow down the booster. As the Raptor engines are throttled down during this phase, the combustion process may result in visible flames as the remaining fuel is burned off, and heat is released from the nozzles. Additionally, any remaining residual fuel or gases within the engine bay can ignite upon contact with the hot surfaces of the booster, creating the fiery visuals. While this may look dramatic, it's a normal and expected phenomenon, especially considering the high temperatures and forces involved in the descent. SpaceX engineers are aware of these effects, and the booster is designed to withstand them without damage. The flames are not indicative of any malfunction. Rather, they are a byproduct of the incredible heat and energy involved in decelerating the booster from such high speeds. As the booster continued its descent, the final stage involved the activation of the three inner gimbaled engines. These engines, designed for precision, took over when the booster was about one kilometer from the landing tower. Their role was to finally control the orientation and speed of the vehicle, ensuring that it aligned perfectly with SpaceX's chopstick system for a mid-air catch. The gimbaled engine's vectoring capabilities allowed the booster to make small adjustments to its position, ensuring a smooth and controlled descent. When the booster reached an altitude of about one kilometer from the landing platform, the three inner gimbaled engines took over. These engines are designed for precision, using their vectoring capability to make adjustments to the booster's position and angle. This ensures that the booster aligns correctly with SpaceX's chopstick system, a unique mechanism that catches the booster in mid-air instead of allowing it to land directly on the ground. This method helps reduce damage to the vehicle, making it easier to refurbish and reuse for future flights. The Raptor engines stand out from other rocket engines due to their technical design and advanced capabilities. These engines use methane and liquid oxygen as propellants, which offers advantages like cleaner burns and higher efficiency. This reduces residue buildup inside the engines, making them easier to maintain and reuse. Another key difference is that Raptor engines are specifically built for reusability. Unlike older engines, which are typically single-use or require significant refurbishment, Raptor engines are designed to be reused multiple times. This reduces the time and cost needed between missions, aligning with SpaceX's goal of lowering the overall cost of space exploration. For those who didn't see the Starship launch in person, I've got a surprise. You can still experience it with a realistic Starship model, made just for our loyal viewers. Since you've watched this far, we know you're one of them. Head to the link in the description to grab yours now and relive space history. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you in the next video.